Hi everyone! So the other day I was online on Facebook just scrolling through what everyone wanted to share with the world and I saw a post by a good friend of mine, Celia, pretty much asking everybody what their opinions on whether it's actually a good idea that shrinks bring up the past all the time with patients who are suffering and whatnot or whether it actually causes more damage. You know, and she included that, you know, sometimes it's necessary, but a lot of the time, maybe most of the time, it actually causes more harm. What are your opinions? So here's my opinion on it. Uh, personally, you know, if, if one wants to look into the past and to see, you know, whether, determine whether or not it's a good idea to bring it up, one has to actually look at what is the past, you know, like if we're talking like what is behind you, what's already happened, in your past, you know, it's passed you by, then then anything that happened yesterday should also not be brought up to discussion. Even if it's still affecting you today, psychologically, emotionally, even physically, you know, biologically, if it happened yesterday, it's in the past, so it shouldn't be brought up. We shouldn't talk about that and try to resolve that in your mind to bring about peace, because that's not going to work. But maybe when she's talking about the past, she means further into the past. So not the immediate past, but like, you know, years ago or in my childhood, stuff that happened to me, you know? But the thing to me is I think that one can't really measure it up how relative, you know, the past is and these various events are purely based on time, on time, on how many days and nights have passed. I mean. There might be something that has happened in somebody's childhood, you know, that was really traumatizing, or even if it wasn't traumatizing, it, it left an impact on them, a really big impact, an impression. And that impression to this day still finds its way to express itself through the person in many different forms. That's how it works, you know, we experience phenomena, we gain impressions from all of our experience, and then we wind up expressing all of our collective impressions that we have, you know, from the bag of impressions we've collected, that's our resource pool, you know, in order to react to things, in order to respond and, you know, figure out how to express ourselves in any instance. You know, so for instance, if you're raised around a lot of violence and anger, you've got a lot of impressions of hostility, you know, and all of that. So chances are that's going to express itself more just because it's been really imprinted upon you. I'm um, impressed upon you. So something that happened in the past, you know, could still be affecting you even more today than something that happened yesterday. Even if something horrible happened yesterday, it might actually be more trivial in comparison to this really heavy event of the past, like the way past, you know? So it's, it's hard to figure out like, you know, which stuff in the past do you talk about? You know, when is it? relevant enough or significant enough when is it still influencing you enough now that it might actually help to bring it up and to try to see the same situation and relate to all of the same information differently see it from a different point of view so that you can change the way you associate with it and so you can change the associated feelings and thoughts that it that it causes you to feel and think you know because that's all it is we have things that happen Sometimes we don't touch on it for a while. You know, there might be a relationship that turns sour and, it, and ends, whether it be a good friend or something romantic. And we just leave it behind. We close the door on it because it's too painful and we leave it behind and it's unresolved, you know, and then it can affect us for years to come, if not the rest of our life and all the relationships that we have with other people, you know? And even if years later, you meet up with that person again, you know, it might actually make a difference and change everything for worlds, you know, make it worlds better um, if you actually resolve all of those issues past and you might be able to find that you will start trusting again and, you know, that your heart's open again for love to flow in and out simply because you've resolved something that was unresolved in the past that was left behind and actually acting as, a, as an obstacle. You know, and not just then, but now, an obstacle that persists. So that's the thing, like I think definitely most of the time it is beneficial to start with, you know, I, I know why the shrink asks, you know, tell us about your mum and your dad and your, your upbringing because 
it's relevant. It might be the most relevant question to ask and information you find in the answer to figuring out where someone is now because you know, it's like everyone's a tree, you know, everyone's got their branches and their foliage and all their unique attributes that define who they are as an identity, as ego, you know, and all the experiences and their memories that make them who they are. But all these trees and branches, you know, all these foliage, it's, it, you can tell a lot more about what the tree is and what it's about. If you know where it comes from, if you can see or identify where it's grounded, you know, where it's growing, the kind of nutrients it had to begin with and the kind of direction it started growing to begin with. It's those first impressions that last a lifetime, as they say, first impressions last a lifetime, meaning things that happen right at the very beginning of life onwards, you know, it's, it's, it has a much heavier sway and impact in terms of the impressions it leaves in you and all of your following expressions thus. You know, especially in the first five years, all the information you receive, you know, that shit stores in you for the rest of your life. Your disposition, you know, which many people believe in this, in this transactional analysis, and PAC, if you want to look into it, but your disposition is decided at the age of five. You know, whether you've got this I'm okay, you're okay persona, or I'm okay, you're not okay narcissist persona, or whether you've got this I'm not okay, you're not okay, you know, nihilist or depressed or sociopath or psychopath um, disposition, or whether you've got this, I'm not okay, you're okay, which is like the victim in need of a savior disposition. So, you know, these dispositions of how you relate to yourself and others and how everything follows thus, apparently is determined at the age of five based on the information you have received. So it's, it's relevant. It's important to understand the initial influences that determined your spiral and where, in which direction you went out into the cosmos of life, so to speak, so you can figure out where you are now. Because if you want to see the greater picture, the bigger constellation, you need to look at all the different stars, all the different beads on the string, all the different moments of your past, you know, all the different events on your timeline, in order to understand the big picture of how it sort of made you who you are now. You know what I'm saying? So I, I do agree that sometimes, sure, some things, it doesn't matter how often you bring it up, it doesn't matter which light you cast it in or which angle you try to look at it, it won't make a shred of difference. And it might actually make things worse. You know, if somebody's lost somebody that they love, you know, and it doesn't matter what they try and do to, to move beyond that and look at it in a positive light, some things cannot be seen positively. And the best thing to do is to just let that person be, let that person know that you love them, that you're there for them, whatever they need, and that you feel sorry for their loss or whatever it have be. Just, you know, sympathy has its place. You know, just acknowledging someone's pain and then move on, you know? If you keep bringing it up, it might actually make it worse for the person, a lot harder for them to move on, to move past that horrible event themselves. So some things should be left behind. Uh, another case is if someone's raped, you know, molested. Bringing up these things and re-stimulating all these past impressions so that you're reinforcing their associations with present tense phenomena. Most of the time, I don't, in my opinion, doesn't help. Yeah, okay. So, you know, there, when bad things happen, Sure, they leave impressions, but how that impression affects you now and the chances of you actually expressing it and the potency of that expression is dependent upon how much those impressions are reinforced. So if somebody saw a bit of violence as a kid, but then was raised in an in a, in a environment that was free of violence and instead was full of love and, and talking and understanding and reason, then... That's, you know, eventually, years on, that person might not even ever express violence. You know, they might not have such an inclination as somebody who has this, these impressions so reinforced on a daily and weekly basis for so many years, you know, to the point where for some people it is literally all they know. So the idea is that all these anchors you have that pull you down, to ways of feeling and thinking, you know, all these different sensory triggers that you have associated past impressions with, 
Some of them you might want to shrink away into nothing. You might want to diminish and reduce them away. So you don't want to feed them. You don't want to keep talking about them or bringing them up and trying to remember them. So it's not going to be beneficial for anyone. It's not going to be fruitful um, for anyone who's trying to help the other person or trying to help themselves. And some things you might want to bring up if it's still really affecting you now and, and, and if talking about it can help and if singing in a different light can help then it might be beneficial to, to bring it up again and try and reinforce it, the impression, with a different feeling, with some different thoughts, you know, trying to reassociate and trying to develop a new anchor whilst dissolving the previous anchors and the previous associations and the previous feelings and thoughts associated with it. So that's my opinion on it, that most of the time I don't think it works out. You know, when, 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 when psychologists tackle really heavy issues that can't be resolved by talking about it. And I've been there too, when shit's really so, so low that talking doesn't help at all. I know that feeling. But I think a lot of the time, if it is something that can be seen from a different perspective, then it is worth bringing up. You know, and even if it is a horrible event that's happened, you know, there might be feelings of blame or guilt associated with these events. And maybe talking about these things can help one see in a different light the situation where they stand in it, where the other people stand in it, and help them come to terms with everything and maybe release some of that guilt and release some of that blame, making life a lot lighter for them. You know what I mean? It's really context sensitive, this whole thing. And when you're talking about what's appropriate in terms of treatment for people, whether it be physically or emotionally or mentally, it's always context sensitive. You know, what, what's, always, what's right in one case isn't always right. What's wrong in one case isn't always wrong. You know? So, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. But it is an interesting question and I do see, you know, I do see its relevance. I think a lot of people do just want to let go of things. You know, for example, the Anzacs, as much as I'm all for showing the respect, celebrating once a year, the fact that we volunteered our bodies for some stupid cause, that some, you know, for someone else's benefit, for someone else's game, whatever the reason, we show our respect because they believe they were doing good and they were fighting for good and they died, they risked their lives or they died for it. But you know, those, those gentlemen that you, every year have to celebrate in their, their little Anzac, you know, celebration day. And they've got their guns firing and the, the minute of silence, you know, and they always say, we will never forget. And really they should say, we'll never let you forget. And you will always remember. And I feel sorry for them because I can imagine with every single gunshot being fired into the air, with all these slogans of, we will always remember, you will never forget. That these, these old men that were there on the fields with their friends and with people that they loved, people they knew, being blown apart and shot and killed. And it was just death all around them. You know, I think some things it is worth leaving behind and not needing to be constantly reminded about, even if it's in the name of honor. The last thing I'd want to hear if I was involved in something like that and I lost a lot of my friends is a gunshot every year. Bang, 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 for like however many minutes. I think that's a little bit fucked up actually. And in that instance, definitely, I reckon it'll be a little bit left behind and, uh, and not brought up all the time. I don't know, that's just my opinion. Cheers for watching guys, and yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs>